This here was my first major stack on my new to me DRZ250. This bike needs no introduction. I've had this bike for a year and a half so I've decided to do a owner's review. And if you do want to see more motorbike content there's more on the way so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a video. This is an in-depth review on the DRZ250. The Suzuki DRZ lineup are known for their versatility and reliability, and the DRZ250 is no exception. Built for adventure, this bike is a blank canvas for people wanting to build an adventure bike, though most people build out their 400s or 650s. The 250 has enough power, but when compared to similar bikes of a two-stroke kind, it does slack a bit, but that's only due to the magic two-stroke power. One thing that this bike makes up for against two-strokes, though, is the engine braking. Once me and a mate on a two-stroke were riding down a, the steepest hill I've ever ridden down, similar to this one, and I was bouncing around and my mate went flying past me because of his lack of engine braking and his brakes was fast becoming hot. He hit a rock and come flying off and there was no way I was stopping to help him, but once I made it to the bottom, without falling off, I went back and helped. But that's not special to the DRZ250, that's across all four strokes. Now let's get into the DRZ specifically. The first thing I'd like to say is that this bike is not made for tall riders. I'm six foot two and I sort of feel a little cramped on this bike, like it's okay, uh, but definitely wouldn't be wanting to do, you know, really long rides on it. Um, but one of the ways you can fix this is to get a higher seat and that'll therefore give you a little bit extra room. Another way to combat the height issues is to raise the handlebars up using special adapters. Another thing I've had to get used to is the faster uh, speed in gear one. So I've come from a CRF 150 and the engine braking speed that it holds you to in gear one is very slow. Uh, in this uh, bike it's about double that and you do need to rely on your uh, physical brakes a lot more. Now, let's talk about the engine. Powering this plucky little bike is a reliable 249cc single cylinder four stroke engine. It's not the most powerful in its class, but it delivers smooth torque and ample power. It's a great little engine and bike for either beginner riders or more seasoned riders as well. Talking suspension and handling, this bike handles pretty well, though the suspension is rather soft. The DRZ250 excels with its agile chassis and responsive suspension, so it doesn't matter whether you're hitting jumps or cornering around tight bends, this bike handles rather well but you do have to keep in mind that the suspension is rather soft, though I'm not convinced the suspension was working real well here when I fell off. Handling wise, this bike performs well not only on the track but at speed as well and it corners tight and you never feel as if you're a bit loose even on the gravel road uh, though I do advise driving to the conditions uh, and going slower when uh, necessary and not trying to always impress your mates now I find this bike a bit soft and depending what you're doing you might want to uh, change the suspension but this remember this is a learner's approved bike and it is not designed uh, to be doing hardcore trails like I've occasionally subjected it to. This is a uh, adventure bike and is made for this side of this type of trail here. Now I really like this bike. 
Now here are a few things that I really do like about it. The seat is very comfortable. It's got a little toolbox there in case you break down, but you're never gonna do that because this bike is reliable as it's got a large fuel tank and I've never come close to running out of fuel once. Even when I worked out, I'd been riding for over 60 kilometers in the reserve tank. The build quality is also very good, which I like about it. Time to move on to some things I don't like about the bike so much. Starting with this digital speedometer. Now it works very well apart from the fact that it takes a while to set up and get a he your head around and it's not very simple uh, and the time resets every time you turn off the key which is a real pain in the bum. Unless you take the globe out there's no way to turn the headlight off with a switch. If you accidentally leave the key on the headlight also stays on and that does two things. First of all, it drains the battery like nothing else and also it wastes the hours that the globe has and then you find yourself constantly replacing the globes like here where the same thing happened. There's also these flimsy, terrible little bark buster type wind deflector things. So I've replaced them with some proper bark busters because all they're going to do if you hit a tree is jam your hand in even more. So, would I buy a DRZ250? Yes I would, I would buy one. I like the bike very much and it's a very reliable unit. Where it lacks on power you could easily just get a DRZ 400 or 650. Now if I was a little bit older I asked what I'd be doing and it's the only real reason you'd get a 250 over the other two is if you are a learner or you do want a bit of a lighter bike. It may not be the best bike for tall riders but all of the issues can be rectified. You can get a comfier seat, raise the handlebars and sort the issues out pretty much straight away. That's the same for all issues on this bike. They can all be easily fixed and then you've got a really solid riding unit. This bike is a great little learner's approved bike and it'll do plenty enough for country roads because you really do not need to be doing 110 on country roads like I know a lot of riders do do. It'll overtake, it'll do what it needs to do, it'll get you there and back. So, in my opinion, this is a great little bike. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, it's free, and you'll never miss out on another video again. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.